Hello everyone, I would like to welcome you to my video about the Volron aluminium parts. As you have probably seen in my last video, I plan to build a Volron 2.4. Of course, I will take you with me on this journey. Well, to be honest, the printer build is not my first printer. I built myself a Prusa E3 clone in 2013. This works perfectly fine until today, ok, here and there a clocked hot end, but that's it. It's a really good and functioning device. But it does not have all the modern features which a Voron 2.4 offers. The printing plate is prepared with a mixture of glue and water. This is simply outdated. There is no bed leveling and the controller board is an Arduino. Don't get me wrong here. It works fine, but a 32-bit microcontrollers are the standards for today. Back to the current printer, the Voron 2.4. The Voron 2.4 is a community printer. You can get the build instructions, the STL files and more information on their website. I will put a link in the video description to their website below, so you can have a look yourself. So, what does community printer mean? The Voron community is not a company that wants to make money with a printer, but rather a few people that just want to build a cool looking printer that is not immediately after the first 20 prints for the trash can. When you build such a printer, you usually have two options. You can buy all the parts separately or in different kits. The Voron community has put a sheet online where you can find all the appropriated parts. I decided to buy a kit from AliExpress for cost reasons. The advantage for me was simple, that I have directly all the components I need and I do not have to import or buy super many packages. I decided for a full build kit which includes all but the printed components. can print the printed parts all by yourself or just buy them from platforms such as eBay or Etsy. But what is about the aluminium components? These components are components that are normally printed. However, only the components that are necessary for the mechanics are taken here into account. Components that do not have mechanical supporting functions must still be printed. So, why did I choose the aluminium components? Mainly for three reasons. Milling myself, better mechanical properties, technically higher quality and lower flow or creep. Because I myself have access to an industrial CNC machine, I thought at first that I can simply mill the components myself. Then I looked at the components and quickly realized that many components require at least two or three setups on a three axis CNC machine. At first I thought it would be cool to mill the parts myself, but then I saw the effort involved and decided to buy the parts. At the time I had to make the decision to buy or mill myself the aluminium prices have risen extremely. Maybe I will mill one or two extra components from aluminium for the Voron in the future, but who knows. By better mechanical properties I am mainly referring to the higher Young's modulus. Simply put, this is the stiffness of the material, for example how much it deforms when a load is applied. That means if you have the same cross section, a higher value of the Young's modulus leads to a lower deformation. The Young's modulus of aluminum is about 70 gigapascals, while RBS is about 
3 gigapascals. In addition to the lower modulus of elasticity, ABS naturally has also a lower strength or fatigue strength and heat resistance. But more about that in the next point. I can very well imagine that the Voron team has already taken this into account, at least in the parts and has adjusted the material thickness. But more about that topic in another video. Another point here is the homogeneous structure. This is simply better with aluminum than with 3D printed designs. However, this does not necessarily have to be seen negatively. It can be also seen as an advantage, as this is the case with fiber reinforced plastic composites with transversely isotropic material behavior. Or autotropic material behavior if you look at the whole laminate. Creep is time dependent behavior of plastics under the influence of force. What exactly does it mean? I found a good example here in this paper. I will link you the title below so you can check it out. You can very well see that the material deforms under a continuous load and that the behavior is time and temperature dependent. What does it mean for the printer? The components of the printer, especially the mechanical loaded components would deform over time. This is not very good for a machine, whether it's a 3D printer, a turning or a milling machine. For this reason, you have to know exactly what you are doing when designing with plastic. But there is more about this in another video. A higher machine stiffness thereby can lead to a better, more accurate printing result. So enough with the theory. Let's get to the aluminium components I ordered. They arrive very well packaged in a cardboard box made in China, where you had to be extremely careful in the past with made in China nowadays stands for a partly quite passable quality. The package has a size of 35 times 31 times 11 centimeter. So, let's open it carefully. In the package there is a foam packing and there they are, the Voron 2.4 aluminium components, all in individual compartments packaged separately so they don't scratch. Very nice. In total you get 69 aluminium components in the aluminium kit, if I have not miscounted. These are mostly well produced. Many components are anodized black, others are anodized red. The anodizing is largely well done. It has only here and there a few smaller areas that were not so well anodized.
So that's it for the first video on the aluminium parts. In the second part we will have a look at some close-ups and discuss the quality of the parts a bit.